Putin nukes? Will he do it? That's what the video will be about. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. It's almost unthinkable, but we're all thinking about it. So we'll see what the cards uh, can tell us about this, and we'll just get in out of this reading quickly because I don't want to dwell in this energy. Okay, so viewer Anna Maria asks, uh, will, will Vladimir Putin use nukes? And I've chose the cards uh, for this week's uh, uh, tarots completely at random. I just uh, chose them. Um, it was after I decided what the questions would be, but I didn't pair the uh, deck of cards to the specific um De uh, question that was being, I just chose them at random. And so this happened to be the one that fell on this uh, Wednesday. So the Housewives Tarot. So we'll see how this works uh, in our little divination here. I can scoop these out carefully. I love using these cards, especially because uh, uh, this week I'm just feeling a little foggy. Uh, and uh, these are so clear in what their divination should be that it makes them easier to use. So yeah, uh, will Putin use nukes? Interesting question for these cards especially. Will Putin use nukes? Will Putin use nukes? Will Vladimir Putin use nukes? Let's have, oh, I didn't want to spread out, did it? Let's try that again. Will Vladimir Putin use nukes? Moment of meditation. Okay. Putin, what's going through your brain? Is this something you will seriously consider? Or is it just another empty threat? Although a lot of his threats are not empty. He follows through on them. So Vladimir Putin, will you use nukes? Okay. Interesting. Not a pretty spread, but we can use it just like that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Will Vladimir Putin use nukes? Now, you know, you have to keep in mind that there's a whole new um, assortment of nukes now that aren't um, as devastatingly, completely threatening as they were in the beginning. There are limited um, devastation, I guess you could say, nukes that are available. So signal for card, will he use nukes? Wheel of Fortune, wow. Wow. So um, this just says, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a roulette wheel, okay? It's anybody's guess. That's the signifier. The challenge to that is the chariot. Things happening at a fast pace. And it's interesting that these cans that are represented here, one is called risk, one is called gain. Uh, these two don't seem to be important because this looks like either chowder or choice, and uh, this could be tarot or carrot. <laughs> so we'll see. But risk and gain are what we're uh, looking at with these things happening at a rapid pace. Interesting. The base of this reading, then, is the hangman. You know, the hangman is looking at a thing from another perspective, okay? I like this card for this question because the man is diminutive and the uh, female energy is uh, huge, okay? So this, uh, for me, is telling me is that there's a compassionate energy uh, that is uh, more uh, in uh, control here than that uh, male energy, which is being hung out to dry. So I like that. The past of this reading as to whether 
Vladimir will use nukes. There's the two of cups. Cups are compassion, and this is the lover's card. And so in the past, lovers, compassion. I think this is a thing of the past for him. In the sky of this reading, this ace of wands is a great big plan. That's what's in the sky. What plan is going to be there? It's a big one. The likely outcome, then, is this Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles is practicing your craft, getting things down exactly right um, and to, sh to show to the world. Um, and again, this is, of course, this whole deck is probably going to be um, influenced more with a feminine energy. And maybe that's why it came up for this reading. Interesting. So Eight of Pentacles, uh, really practicing your craft. I need to check my messages. Okay, so let's see the last four cards. What can this be? The last four cards. Will Putin use nukes? And so far we've got a huge feminine energy uh, over this. So the signature of this is the Queen of Wands. Again, feminine energy. Wands are actions and plans. So there seems to be some sort of a tempering of the uh, energy uh, in this read that looks significant. The environment that that's in is the Hierophant. Of course it is. This is uh, Putin. Or this is the Russian government. The environment that this tempering of energy is in is in the government, which feels threatening to me. That feels unsafe to me because we're talking about the Russian government. The hopes and the fears. Will he use nukes? Ah, so the hopes and the fears. Now, this is not a final outcome, so don't get excited, but this is the Tower card. And uh, so the tarot card is the complete, um, almost dismantling of something uh, that's going to need significant um, repair. Okay. That's the hopes and the fears. That's the fears. Okay. And then the final outcome then is this nine of wands. And the nine of wands is really feeling embattled. But I'm encouraged by the fact that this woman who's trans uh, who's um you know making her way across all these wands um is a feminine energy and she's got a big smile on her face and a big bucket to help her along the way and she's very well balanced on uh, this uh, these these battles that she's uh, working her way through so just to read it through again will he use nukes well it's in the cards i mean he it, it certainly is on the table and it's just how does the thing work out? But it's it challenged by what? It's challenged by things coming on at a rapid pace. Um, and this is uh, risk and gain is what's uh, in the balance here. The base of this whole thing is the hanged man, which I love because it puts this female energy way bigger than this uh, male energy who's been hung out to dry. And in the past of this is the two of cups lovers. That's in the past. That love is, uh, is, is something that's not... Uh, a big uh, point of decision in this thing. And in the sky of this with this Ace of Wands is, in fact, that plan, that great big plan that's up in the sky looming over all of this. The final outcome with this Eight of Pentacles is telling us practicing your craft to get it just right. It makes me think of practicing getting the nuke just right or practicing getting your diplomacy, uh, your leadership just right. Not sure. But then we come back to the um, the very self of that question, will he use nukes? And we get this queen of wands, and we put a female in charge of this action here. Okay? I love that, because that is a more a tempered, um, a considerate energy to be in charge of that, that plan. And it's in the environment of, of course, the Hierophant, which is the government, the Russian government, which is Putin. And then the uh, hopes of the fears, which is the fear, I think, is that this becomes some sort of a more of a tower moment than it is already. And then the final outcome, um, not completely satisfying, but it is the Nine of Wands. And this is coming through the battle. And this woman's come through the battle with a smile on her face. And this is the female energy. This is compassion. Okay. So there's every uh, indication here that it's something that is being considered seriously. But the compassionate energy that's follows through this whole deck, and I guess that's why this deck was, was, came up uh, for this reading, uh, is that female, compassionate, level-headed, uh, non-testosterone-driven energy. And coming through that battle uh, as a winner is uh, hopeful to me. So will he use nukes? It's considered, but there's a lot going against it, holding it in check. And so hopefully that's a message of, of encouragement. 
Well, that was the result. Um, what do you think? Let me know. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards okay, now. Okay, so this is the Housewives Tarot, a domestic divination kit with deck and instruction book by Paul Keppel and Jude Buffum. And this is put out by Quirk uh, uh, Press, I guess it's called. So this is so neat. It's reminiscent of a recipe box. And it's, it's really sturdy, solid, thick cardboard. And it's got so many cool illustrations on the outside. It was only about $16. And... Um, and then it's even got here, uh, guaranteed by the housewife occultists of America. Just really neat. Okay. So if we go inside, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's set up just like a recipe box. The first little card here, you'll see it says uh, the housewife tarot. And then on the back of this, it just tells you about the publisher and the copyrights and that sort of thing. But the second card is labeled as the major arcana. Okay. And then the back of it is an actual real recipe. I mean, I've read the recipe. You can make this. This one's called the Icebox um, Fortune Cake. And I won't read the recipe, but I'll just tell you this cool uh, little thing it says is for use with the Neapolitan spread. The spread is referring to, I think, four or six uh, ways to divine the cards, to spread the cards out. So this is for use with the Neapolitan spread. And it says here, eat this cake quickly before your past, present, and future start melting together. Really, you know, just cute. Uh, the first section here had the major arcana in here separately. Of course, I've mixed up the cards and, and shuffled them, so it's not that anymore, but I put that little group there so you can see what it looked like. The second um, card here is the uh, minor arcana uh, card, recipe card. Again, another recipe that you can actually prepare. This is like deviled eggs, but they've called it here divinated eggs instead of deviled eggs. And it says for use with the dinette spread. So like a dinette table. And it says you'll never go back to deviled eggs once you've had them divinated. Really cool and a decent recipe. The third um, card, which I've got out of, uh, and then the, of course the uh, pip cards, the minor, minor arcana with it. The third card, which was actually uh, here, uh, it talks about the instruction booklet. And I'll pull it out, and it says, yep, instruction booklet. And then on the back, another recipe. And this is, is Madame Marlena's Mystical Martini. It's for use with the martini spread, which is another spread they recommend. And also, it's an, an, an actual, actual recipe you could prepare. The booklet itself is amazing. It's a really good quality of booklet, okay? It's got full color and really great, uh, interesting divinations for the cards. But the first part is what's so cool. The first page here tells you one, two, three, four, five different spreads that you could uh, lay the cards out in, they suggest, they've developed. And then this, I'll just tell you this first little paragraph and then a last sentence, because this is, just gives you an idea of how uh, quirky and how interesting this thing is written. It says right here, regarding the mystical housewife's tarot, the legend, uh, according to gossip, the housewife's tarot was introduced by housewife extraordinaire Marlene Louise Weatherby in the early 1950s. She was a happy homemaker who seemed to have it all, a devoted husband, obedient children, a sparkling home that was the talk of the town, a fashion sense to die for, and for more than her fair share of, and more far more than her fair share of women's intuition. Very cool. And then just the last sentence is so neat. It says here, just how exactly did Marlene acquire these myst this mystical knowledge? Whether, whenever pressed, she kept her lips sealed tighter than Tupperware. Marlene took her secret to the grave, bless her heart, and the origin of the housewife's tarot shall remain shrouded in mystery forevermore. Just really, really very thoughtful. Everything about this. So if you can't tell, I'm loving the deck. So that's the box. The cards, uh, actually, they're a decent weight of cards, okay? They're not too slick. And uh, this kind of looks like a tablecloth, doesn't it? And then, uh, let me lay them out for you. The, the are different, um, the Major Arcana and then the Minor uh, Pip cards have their own kind of color-coded uh, sequencing here. Major Arcanas are circled in black. The uh, cups are in blue and uh, green for the pentacles, etc. and so forth. And they're very colorful. They're easy to divine. The only thing I would say is that this Empress, for instance, is the number two of the Major Arcana. And in typical Rider Waite system, number two is the High Priestess. And if I'm not mistaken, the High Priestess in this was actually labeled as a number three, which would be the Empress. So that doesn't quite uh, me meld with the uh, Rider Waite system, but they're easy enough to divine because they tell you right here what this card is supposed to be. You know, I lay the cards out like this so that you get a chance to see more than just the few that come out when we do a reading. And um, to also give you an example of, you know, if you're doing a reading for someone, they can do this too and uh, lay the cards out and you kind of get their energy in you know, if you don't particularly want them to shuffle them, which I don't particularly like people to shuffle my cards because I kind of shuffle them uh, not in a... Um, 
you know, not in a, a rough manner. So here we have it, the Housewives Tarot. Really great. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.